Butterflies, moths, and whatever you want to call these guys, this is the Order Lepidoptera. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today we are talking about the Order Lepidoptera, and if you don't know what an order is, you can click here to check out this video I did on scientific classification. Lepidoptera is the order that contains the butterflies, the moths, and the lesser-known skippers. You can usually tell a butterfly from a moth, as butterflies have knobbed antennae, tend to be day-flying, and when they're at rest, hold their wings in an upright, folded position. While moths, on the other hand, usually have feathery or serrated antennae, will normally be found flying about at night, and usually hold their wings in an open, flat position when they're at rest. Skippers are sometimes considered a subset of butterflies, but are often considered their own third group within Lepidoptera. They have knobbed antennae, are usually day flying, and their wings are either held open or folded or somewhere in between, depending on the species. Despite their differences, all Lepidoptera can be characterized by a variety of traits. Lepidoptera are coated in fine scales on their wings and body, and this is actually where they get their name. The Greek word lepidos means scale, and terra means wing, so lepidoptera means scale wing. And these scales are responsible for the vast array of patterns and colors you see in the butterflies and moths. And if you've ever held a moth, you know, as one does, and you notice a fine powder on your fingertips, those are the scales coming off of the wing. And if you took one of those wings and scraped all the scales off it, which don't do this on a living specimen. But if you did, you'd be left with this translucent, like classic insect wing, where it's clear and veined just as a cicada, fly, or beetle wing would be. Butterflies and moths will also either lack mouth parts, like this rosy maple moth here, or they'll have sucking mouth parts, like you'll see on a lot of butterflies to sap up nectar. Lepidoptera are also holometabolous, and you probably know what this is, you just don't know the fancy term for it. Essentially, holometabolis means they go through complete metamorphosis. This is a four-stage metamorphosis. Egg, larvae, pupae, and adult. The eggs are eggs. The lepidopter and larval stage are what we call caterpillars. The pupal stage is, we'll think of a butterfly chrysalis or a silken moth cocoon. And the adult stage are the butterflies and moths we know and love. So why do we even care about these things? Why can't I just swat them in cold blood anytime I see one? Well, one, because that makes you a bad person. And two, because they serve a variety of important roles in our environment. The one we always hear about is pollination. So let's tackle that first. While larva lepidoptera normally feed on plant tissues, Adult Lepidoptera tend to feed on nectar, if they feed it all. When they feed on the nectar of these flowers, pollen particles will collect on the legs and body of these butterflies and moths, and then when they fly to another flower, boom, pollination. They may not be as generally effective as bees with their fuzzy, pollen magnet, hairy bodies, but they're still very important pollinators for a lot of plants. Their relationships with flowers have also led to some really cool co-evolutions, one of the famous ones being the Madagascan star orchid with its massively long nectar tube, and the Wallace's sphinx moth with the giant proboscis to match. Or how about the yucca moth, which intentionally pollinates yucca plants to create seed production in the plant, and lays eggs in the plant so that its larvae can feed on the developing seeds. Aside from their pollinating tendencies, Lepidoptera play a huge role in our food webs, as caterpillars consume and pass on more plant energy than any other animal taxon. We can get a sense for just how vital they are through their relationship to one of their most common predators, birds. Most terrestrial bird families have caterpillars as a staple part of their nestling's diet. One clutch of Carolina chickadees can consume 6,000 to 9,000 caterpillars before their nestlings fledge and leave the nest. And many birds will actually adjust how many eggs they lay, and even when they breed based on peak caterpillar abundance. Everyone wants a piece of these guys. I mean, they're these soft, squishy bags of high protein and fat energy. 
They're perfectly suited for a hungry young bird. I guess aside from the ones that have like irritating hairs and spines and chemical defenses. But overall, very tasty. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows though. Humans and caterpillars can often find themselves at odds with each other, especially when we're trying to eat the same thing. As we talked about, caterpillars are great at taking a ton of plant matter and turning it into a tasty caterpillar-shaped snack. But what if we want to eat the plant matter instead? In agriculture, many lepidopterans can be a serious pest. Corn earworms eat away at our corn, and armyworms and cutworms eat up all our veggies. Cutworms are really fun because they get their name because they like to chop down entire plants, the stem, and then eat it at like ground level. Uh, so you'll just have this one caterpillar just leveling plants. And if you grow tomatoes, I'm sure I don't need to tell you about tomato hornworms. But if you keep reptiles, I'm sure I don't need to tell you how tasty other animals find them. So despite our conflicts with some species, we still desperately need caterpillars and Lepidoptera for healthy ecosystem function. One great way you can help is by planting native plants on your property. I emphasize native because most caterpillars, and other insects for that matter, can only feed on plants that are historically found in their environment. So unless you live in Northeast Asia, your mom's hostas aren't doing anything for the environment. But native plants can be a gold mine. In the United States, for example, over 500 species of caterpillar feed on oak trees. And if you don't have room for trees, 115 species feed on goldenrod. I encourage you to look up what plants are native to your area. And the next time you do any gardening or landscaping, try planting native. And if you're still a bit confused about what's native and what isn't, try asking the staff at your local greenhouse, or even resources like Reddit and Facebook have plenty of groups for that sort of thing. And if you plant the right plants, the Lepidoptera will come. So remember, the Lepidopterans are the butterflies, the moths, and the skippers. They're characterized by their scaly wings and bodies, their sucking mouth parts, or lack thereof, and their complete metamorphosis, as they are holometabolous. They're really important to our ecosystems as they provide pollination for a ton of plants and play a critical role in our food webs. And despite our conflicts with them in agriculture, we still need them around for healthy ecosystem function. So treat them gently and plant native. Thank you all for listening. Peace.